What sparked you to, to, to issue that podcast and do an episode this week on Neil Olshay? The bottom line is when uh, yourself and Chris Haynes put it out there, you know, it brought back a lot of thoughts of really kind of what I went through at the end of my uh, tenure with the Blazers. It's kind of one of those things where I look at it and I say, I'm not surprised in any way, shape, or form. I mean, the way he treated me literally, you know, the first three months on the job as the GM of the Blazers, you know, when he's really just kind of feeling his way out, I'm sure, in that organization um, in hierarchy versus now with everything that has transpired with the unfortunate passing of Paul Allen, uh, who loved the Blazers dearly. Um, no, nobody's kept him in check for, for quite some time, I can only imagine. So it's only probably, uh, I can imagine, only gotten worse and worse over time. When I listened to the Dick Allen interview, it didn't surprise me because he was trying to control everything because he was obviously... It wasn't one, I don't think he was qualified for the job, and two, he has no idea how to treat people. He's an arrogant SOB, you know, that he, he, his ego gets in the way of everything, and uh, he's just a bad human being. you got to be upfront and you got to be uh, honest and tell people where they're at and not kind of, you know, keep them at bay and not give them any answers. And, and on on that note, I was 100% interested in being involved in the Blazers' business side, if that were a possibility. And when he got the job with the, with the Trailblazers, I called them. You know, the, the funny thing about the NBA is nobody wants to tell the truth. They're all covering each other. And um, I, I don't remember his first name. But there was a guy named Miller working for the owner. Yeah, Larry Miller. Yeah, he was with... with um, which we call it, I think with Nike. Yep. And I called him up and I said, man, you guys are barking up the wrong tree hiring this guy. This guy qualified, sells himself as he is, and it'll be it'll be a problem before it's over. Um, I wanted to be there. I, I was willing to, to figure out how to get there. And so, um, you know, I, I simply sent a, a exploratory email to the head of business at the time, Sarah Mensa, was like, Hey, I'd love to be involved on the business side. You know, I think I've been good for the organization. The organization has been great to me. I'd love to see what options may be, uh, may be out there for me. Two days later, um, Neil Olshay calls me on the phone out of the blue and just rips me a new one. I, I mean, I don't know how many F-bombs were dropped in that phone call. Before he got with the Clippers, he was working as an agent, and he was trying to get uh, Sean to switch agents while he's working for the Clippers and it was totally unethical. You know, the guy's working for the Clippers and trying to also get players uh, to switch agents. So that told you right there what kind of guy he was. The environment in the organization and how you saw Neil Olshay treat other people, uh, how would you classify that? Never was truly uh, forthright in answering any questions about where I may potentially stand in the organization. Just the whole, uh, you know, uh, atmosphere of never answering a question and just keeping things at bay. And then, you know, how that ended up two and a half months or so later, um, becoming the way that he kind of uh, talked to me and treated me at the end of the run just was, you know, as a former player who I felt I at being a part of that Blazer organization deserved better. Um, or wanted better, it, it was really eye-opening. Very, very rarely do you really see and, and know what's going on with that organization. Uh, he likes to have a lot of credit. He wants to have a lot of credit, whether it's the drafting of Damian Lillard, whether it's the C.J. McCollum pick. Um, he, he likes that. Um, you know, he just, uh, he's very opinionated, and he wants the, the credit and the acclaim. And, and some people are like that. That's fine, you know. One of the things that y you see bullies do is, you know, they'll intimidate people. Obviously, you know, when you get to a position of power, you hold a lot of people's jobs in the palm of your hand. How does the culture of fear, uh, you know, infect a franchise like that? You've been in some franchises, you've seen it, you know Neil Olshay's character. You know, how can a culture of fear hurt a franchise? Well, nobody wants to be there after a while. You can't have people, it's like telling a kid, you, you know, don't shoot the ball. I mean, you got to have, give people confidence and let them do their jobs. And 
you know, he's a micromanager, that's obvious. And, and uh, you know, it just creates a whole atmosphere of, of, of a negative situation. And, and nobody likes to be, fear only works temporarily. The way he treated Dick Al is a, is a shame. I mean, it's, it's just ridiculous that the guy wants to uh, be part of the organization. And, he, and, and I, know, I know Dick Al a little bit through the draft. And he's a nice guy. He's a great guy, you know. And those kind of people, you know, with any gumption and character are not going to deal with that kind of stuff. On June 4, 2012, Neil O'Shea became the 10th general manager in Portland Trailblazers franchise history. He has kept such position ever since. In 2015, he was promoted to the president of basketball operations. As general manager, O'Shea is responsible for player contract negotiations, supervision of coaching staff operations, including the power to hire and fire head coaches and assistants. As president of basketball operations, he leads the organization's basketball operations department, overseeing talent evaluation, player personnel decisions, contract negotiations, and salary cap management. Before working for the Trailblazers, he was general manager of the LA Clippers in 2010. Simply put, Neil O'Shea is the most powerful man in Portland, Oregon, and the local media has had enough. However, the media's disdain for O'Shea isn't solely due to their personal dislike as it's currently being portrayed. It's more so due to his recent business decisions that have exposed the conniving habits of the media industry. After the firing of head coach Terry Stotts, two names rose as potential candidates for his replacement. Jason Kidd, resulting from a personal request from star player Damian Lillard, and Chauncey Billups, a favorite of O'Shea. O'Shea and Billups' relationship dates back to 2011 when O'Shea was a general manager of the Clippers and Billups was in his later years as a player for the Clippers. As the hiring of Billups turned from rumors to potential reality, the Portland media started to work overtime to resurrect sexual assault allegations that was levied against Billups in November of 1997. The media's ringleader, Eric Griffith, used Twitter to post details of such allegations from the book Out of Bounds by Jeff Benedict, which was published in 2001. Twitter, which is a social media platform, is a tool often used by journalists such as Griffith to degrade the image of an individual that they don't want to see earn a position or promotion. Journalists such as Griffith are usually not held accountable for their reports or writings. Therefore, there was never any question into why he posted such information that people already knew existed on social media. There was also never any question into the purpose of him making such posts. Apparently, many Portland media members detested Billups as a candidate to replace Stotts. So they too believed the allegation that the NBA leaders were already aware of was strong enough to prevent O'Shea of hiring Billups. O'Shea, working in the league for years now and having experience as an agent, knew the conniving ways of the media and did not succumb to their attack. On June 27, 2021, the Portland Trail Blazers named Chauncey Billups as Terry Stotts' replacement. Defeated but unfettered, the Portland media then moved to plan B, star player Damian Lillard. Typically, when a star basketball player doesn't get the coach he wants, he usually throws a temper tantrum and becomes a cancer to the team. The Portland media hoped that such would take place with Dame since the team didn't get Jason Kidd. Such never happened as Dame had repeatedly stated his commitment to the Blazers organization way before Billups was hired. However, the media seemed hell-bent on creating an organization controversy, continued to create rumors through trade scenarios where Dame could go play in Philly in exchange for Ben Simmons. ESPN's Stephen A. Smith also helped the Portland media rumor mill by constantly pleading with the Knicks and Dame to join forces. There you go. Leon Rose, <laughs> Worldwide West William Wesley, Scott Perry, Tom Thibodeau. I don't want to hear cap space and picks. You give Portland what the hell they ask for if Damian Lillard is available. Dame never succumbed to any of the media's deceitful ways. On October 28, a New England-based hip-hop platform, Bars on I-95, 
traveled to Portland and Dane blessed them with a freestyle rap segment. Within the bars, he reminded the Portland media of the organization that he's dedicated to. Uh, honeymoon in Capri, I'm giving vacation vibes. Been trying to do different shit just to stay alive. Maybe Bosnia next, shout out to Bobo. They know if I take a trip, it's usually the Cabo, a creature, a habit. You moving too fast, the turtle beat you, silly rabbit. <laughs> My game be so intact, they thinking it's a tactic. Niggas acting, over flexing they muscles, building they lactic acid. Season 10 coming soon, I still don't lack the passion. Right. They wanted me to jump ship, rip city back in action. Not me, I can't jump around like a pogo. With Melo at the Soho, still pulling from the logo. Fake kick it, that's a no no, my nigga for real. Try to keep him out the league, but we got him to deal. Yeah. All that red we were sipping, don't know how many meals. After Dame's late October statement, the Portland media had to go back to their drawing board. They weren't able to scare Billups from entering town, and they weren't able to push Dame out of town. So now they decided to take a shot at the man, Neil O'Shea. A week after Dame reminded them about his dedication to the Blazers, reports surfaced of bullying allegations within the organization. Not only was this being reported by current employees, but also former employees of O'Shea from Portland and Los Angeles. After Eric Griffith's failed mission to tarnish the coaching credibility of Chauncey Billups, the Portland media needed someone who's not only a veteran in the media industry, but also someone who has a loud voice on the airwaves. The Portland media has now given the reins to sports columnist John Cazano to lead the charge. On the same week the allegations were reported, Cazano hosted two former O'Shea employees on the show, giving them the platform to tear O'Shea's image. Cazano personally also used this time to give his two cents. He got mad that I mentioned that he played golf and he came up and, you know, basically F you, F this, I'll never talk to you again. You made me look lazy. I'm going to take away your media credential, um, you know, and I walk away kind of laughing about it because I, I don't have to work with the guy. And I realized that he's insecure and he's small. However, Neil O'Shea and his NBA colleagues are highly aware of what's taking place behind the scenes. He is reportedly fighting to keep his job and his colleagues are in the process of forming a professional association that will protect an executive's image from being easily tarnished by the media. The Portland media is using the same tactics that the Seattle media used to take down Jimmy Lake. This one, however, is not based on fabricated physical abuse. More so, alleged verbal abuse and spiritual intimidation from a man who's made the Blazers organization newsworthy during the late 2010 decade.